to recap the last video on exploration. Exploration can be extremely improved by being selective in where you go within this game. There is absolutely no reason you should drop down on the backside of a random moon to go exploring. You can be selective in where you explore in this game, and there are more tiles than you could ever imagine that you could explore, so why not pick the best tiles to explore? And also, a wizard is never late. He arrives precisely when he means to. All these orbits are simulated. That means the astronomical events, they happen like clockwork, and you can predict them rather easily when they're going to happen. And you can see sites that um, others have not seen in this game. You can arrive right at time to witness eclipses or see fabulous moons crest the horizon. But as we continue, one of the factors that we're going to see that vastly improves exploration in this game is the alien wildlife. And the alien wildlife can not only provide challenges for us when we're exploring, but it can also make it interesting, as they can do very interesting and unusual things within this game. And they will always surprise you. But realizing that you're able to control the night sky, the landscape, and the alien life is going to vastly improve your exploration experience within Starfield. From just landing on random moons and planets in random areas, you can land precisely where the entertainment is and have a ton better experience while you're exploring and allow those actual procedurally generated points of interest and events to pull you in. And when you're strategic and selective about where you go is when you will start to find the little hidden nuances within the game that exist. All the alien creatures, all the different moons and planets that are circling each other, and the absolute splendor that exists within Starfield. You can find yourself in tropical jungles, orbiting red gas giants, fighting monsters that shoot flames at each other, and realize how much of an absolute masterpiece this game is. So first up, if we're going to be exploring barren moons or icy rocks floating around the nether, it should be ones that are aesthetically pleasing. And the best way to make these aesthetically pleasing is by manipulating the night sky. Now, majority of these moons and icy rocks are going to be tidally locked to their host planet. Not all of them, mind you, but the vast majority of them will have the host planet in the same position at the same spot always. So it's a matter of finding that tile to um, make our night sky so much more interesting while we explore. And then once we do find where that planet is, it's a rather easy proposition to manipulate where it's going to be. And also, there's the factor of time involved. As we can see, we can have astronomical events occur right before us, uh, just a matter of knowing when they're going to occur. So with this planet, I can tell its position in the night sky and where the star is going to rise from the horizon. It's always going to follow the galactic disk like it does on um, our planet. So we can see where it's going to rise and where it will intersect with the host planet and cause this eclipse. And I can tell you exactly by the position of the planets in the night sky when it's going to occur. It's going to occur around 10 a.m. planet time. We'll see that occur. So I can easily skip forward in time by resting in my ship 
and show up just in time for the eclipse. Now to get on to how do I do this? So let's take this planet for example. This is where I took that video from. So we're gonna go ahead. We're just gonna land, pick a random spot. First spot you might pick might be Bupkis. You might not even see the host planet in the sky. If that does occur, go ahead and pick the opposite end of the, the planet. You're gonna pick the opposite side. It's probably going to be visible from there. If it's not visible from there, you're going to divide the planet into quarters. One of them will be able to see that host planet. So what I do when I get out as I'm looking at the planet, do I like its position in the sky? Personally, I like it a little bit lower, a little bit closer to the horizon. Um, so what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just look. Well, I'm going to get distracted by the ship landing first. This always happens. You're going to get distracted by it. It's candy landing for you. Of course, I'm going to take a peek at it, and I'm going to get rather distracted by it. I'm going to question whether I want to take that ship or not. I almost did. Um, but if we get back to the resetting of the planet in the night sky, what I'm going to do is I'm looking here. I See the galactic plane? That's that fuzziness that you get in the night sky in the middle there. The star is going to always float around that. And I'm going to look at the night sky and I'm going to kind of judge the direction of the stars and the position of the horizon. I'm really channeling my inner caveman while doing this and I am going to figure out where I should land next. And this is all judging on whether the sun is rising or setting, and I can kind of see where I should go. And just imagine the equator's like a clock, and that planet is like the hour hand. We can go ahead and project where we should land if we want that planet at the horizon. And that's pretty easy to do. So you're going to make just small adjustments. We just need to move it about one to two hours. So just a small adjustment closer to um, the horizon. So I'm going to give you a heads up. The planets in the night sky do not correspond to the star map unfortunately but day and night do correspond to the star map so you can tell the day side from the night side and that's how we did it just a small little change and i have that giant blue ball sitting right at the horizon for a nice, wonderful trip and exploration. I have a fantastic view. I can go ahead and scope some things out and see if I want to visit them and travel to them. And this is going to make the experience a lot better if you spend a little bit of time on the planet figuring out where's going to be the best location for me to land to observe that. And it does make travel substantially better. Also, things you might want to consider is the gravity of the planet. The lower the gravity, the easier it's going to be to travel. And it's not because you're going to be able to travel faster. It's going to be because you won't have to avoid objects. You can float above them. So you're not running around mountains or rocks or anything like that. You're just floating above them. Now for weather. Weather can greatly impact your experience. Here we're going to see three pictures. They're all taken from the same spot. And there's ones taken during uh, a fog, ones during the day, and ones at night. And we can see that the visibility of the sky is rather changed by them. So we're going to go ahead and explore how to change the weather. I'm sure you know how to change between day and night. I don't need to explain that to you. Um, but as for the weather, say here I landed at this place and it's got like a sandstorm going on. Not really good visibility. This is going to be kind of like boring, junky exploration in my opinion. Maybe that's your thing, but it's not my thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to repeatedly fast travel back to my ship. This is going to cause the weather to re-roll. This does not advance time, mind you. 
um, but it does change the weather. So I had to do it two times there to get the weather I wanted. Sometimes you'll have to do it multiple times. The majority of the time, doing it just once will um, get you clear skies. So we have this beautiful view right here that we were able to get by clearing the weather. Now we have the large topic of aliens. There are, I believe, 205 unique aliens within Starfield. That is quite a lot. Now there are, beyond the unique, there are a lot of reskins out there um, and resizes where they'll make them bigger or smaller or slightly alter the skins on them. So I like to think of aliens two different ways. I like to think of one, how aggressive are they or docile are they, and then two, I like to think how Earth-like are they opposed to how uh, completely alien are they. So here we're, we're seeing some odd aliens, but a lot of them just look like large insects. But we can also find aliens that are just really strange. And that was a good example of very aggressive aliens. Here, we're also going to get an example of very aggressive aliens. But they're also really strange. These guys are absolutely odd. They shoot fire at each other. They're extremely aggressive. Um, and, and it makes for just absolutely interesting exploration dealing with the environment as well. Now, there are going to be times when you don't want to deal with the environment and you want to see alien life. That's when you're going to be choosing um, places that have more docile aliens to explore in. And this is going to vastly improve your gameplay if you're thinking about alien life. Now typically the more abundant of the alien life I see the more aggressive they are. Whereas the less abundant, the more uh, docile they are. At least that has been my finding. If you found different, um, go ahead, go ahead and let me know that. But that that has been my experience here. The more uh, abundant alien life is on a planet, the more aggressive they seem to be. And then we have this last example coming up of alien life. And this is going to show us a more docile and more odd experience within the spectrum of aliens within Starfield. So on this planet, we have these wonderful floating aliens and they don't seem to mind you at all. They seem to just let you be, but it does, um, set the stage pretty well for exploration if you wanted to have a more chilled out environment where you're not blasting everything known to creation and you want to have kind of like this chill experience while exploring which i think is perfectly fine i do it all the time myself and just to touch back on gravity and your um, different regions now gravity will just the lower the gravity the easier it's going to be to move within that area and that's going to be true for basically any environment like if it's really mountainous and you have a very low gravity environment you can just fly above all the hills and have no problem but if you're in a high gravity environment and a mountain that's going to make travel extremely difficult, and that should be taken into consideration. And just to close out my thoughts on this topic here, um, essentially, if you are exploring within Starfield, it should be places that are aesthetically pleasing or they have interesting alien life. You should not be landing on the backside of some rock that's floating around in space and has nothing going on. There's tons of them in Starfield. Don't worry, the main quest will take you to them. But there's thousands of places out there that are beautiful or have interesting life going on and 
make exploration very enjoyable and that's where you should be exploring within the game if you found this video interesting or useful in any way go ahead and give me a like and subscribe i what do, do appreciate mean, them thank you